for not only for it bringing us together, but also for endowing us with new friends. This is a very important, I think, Ron. Thank you very much. Now, my presentation is a quite um, courageous one. For the first time, I'm trying to build this bridge between East and West, which means that I actually uh, I have the courage to establish some correspondences with a different tradition, a tradition I know out of uh, my enthusiasm and passion for it, not as a scholar, but still I will have as a reference point the Jewish tradition, because I'm dealing with the Jewish tradition mainly, and I will establish some correspondences with uh, an uh, Indian uh, system, we could say system, but it's not a system. It's uh, actually um, the thinking of uh, Sri Ramana Maharshi. So, I will start by um, referring to the concept of being in Judaism first. And uh, you will see that the link between the two traditions is established through referring to this term, the term to be, being, the act of being. Now, um, how am I going to explain that? We know that the topic of the divine names is a very important topic in Judaism and Christianity as well. Now, I brought here two verses in Hebrew referring to two very important names. The name Elohim, which is usually translated by God, and Ehiya uh, Sherechie, which is usually translated, I am that I am, I am, uh, or I will be what I am, or I will be, I will translate it with the be, and also in lady. So we have the two verses. The first verse from Exodus 3. Vayomer Anuhi Elohe Avicha Elohe Abraham and Hei Yitzchak Elohe Yaakov. This is what God is telling to Moses when he calls Moses to begin his mission and yes, to go to and, and to take the people from Egypt. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Yaakov. Elohim, this is a name which in the Hebrew and the Jewish theology refers to the way we humans can address God from a human perspective. What does it mean? Is a higher name than saying that God is almighty or is present through his actions here. Yes, so I might say that he is, let's say, uh, um, a powerful God, the God who sees me, the God who knows everything. Yes, these are names which refer to the way we describe God. There is another level when you say Elohim, it means that we all together establish that, yes, there is God, God exists, and since he is not to be found within this sensible world, we will refer to him by using the name Elohim, which means we know he is not a creature, yeah, he is not a creature. He does exist, and we will refer to him by the word Elohim. So everyone knows he is beyond our grasp, still here, but it's not a creature. This is the name Elohim, the name God uses when he first calls Moses, in order to show that, look, there is a tradition. People used to call me in your own uh, context, yes, in your family, in your, within your people, people know me as Elohim. I am that God, Elohim. Still, before going to Egypt and accepting the mission, he didn't want, he was not very happy with the mission he was uh, ascribed, Moses is asking God, please, can you, I, I don't see people, I, it's very, I don't know how to escape you, but I will find a way. 
That means to be a star. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, when, when Moses receives this mission, the second question he's asking is, okay, I go to my people in Egypt, but who, who, what is your name? What am I going to tell my people about you? Who are you? What is your name? So this question comes immediately after God is calling Moses and he is presenting himself. Yes, he's saying, look, I am Elohe Aviha, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe This is rather strange, yes, to ask once again for the name of, the, of God when he actually presented himself very well. Now, what is going on here? Moses is asking for a different name. Because a different name in the Jewish tradition means a different level of communication. What does it mean, a different level of communication? We need a personal relation, not only to convey that, yes, God exists, and we all know this by tradition. Yes, it's a family here. It's a pedigree. <laughs> it's by tradition. But God does not exist only. He is present here for everyone. Here. He is present. It's not only tradition. It's not a, not a museum. Yes. Then he's asking for the name appealing to this present God because he needs his God to be present with him there. So you need a name to make God present when he reaches Egypt. So he will receive, indeed, God will give him another name. This is the surprise. God is not saying, look, I gave you. He's saying, no, I will give you. Tell them that I am Ehyeh Hashem Ehyeh. Which means, I am, it is usually trans translated through present, through the present tense in Romanian. I, Yosur, in English the same, I am, or will be, what I am, or will be. Actually, in Hebrew, we have here imperfect, which means the action is not fulfilled. What does it mean? He began by being, he is being, and he will be being. This is the sense of the word, which means that God was, is, and will be in an unfulfilled manner, I mean, it will never, this being will never end. This is why it is imperfect, the text. What does it mean? It means that God is fully present, was fully present, is fully present, and will be fully present. More than this, here is what to say to the people of Israel, Vayomer Elohim el Moshe. Eyeh asher hiyeh vayomer, ko tomar vivne Israel el yesh lachani alehem. Here is what to say to the people of Israel. Eyeh, which means I am, has sent me to you. I am has sent me to you. We see that we have first singular person. He never, he is never referred to as the third person. He is, when we say Elohim, God is. It is the, the third person. What does it mean, the first person in Hebrew, which is Ani, Anoki, me, I? It means that you can enter in this relation with me as I, which means you and me, not you and him. What does it mean, I? I sent, I, I am has sent me to you. The one who is always sent me to you, which means that he is now with me and is with you, the people of Israel, in Egypt, yes? Now we go further. The second, the third level, actually, is the Tetragrammaton, the highest divine name in Hebrew. So when you read the Hebrew scriptures, you say, um, Adonai. It is a name which is compounded from three, four <coughs> letters. You, hey, gav, hey. These are the letters. Yud, hey, vav, hey. 
This is the tetragrammaton, three letters. You cannot read it because it is a mysterious name, the mysterious name of God. It is a powerful name. Why? The, the moment you pronounce it, God is present because the connection between name and object, name and what the name is saying, is, you know, in, uh, in Hebrew we have the word dava, which means object, thing, and word. So this name, when you pronounce this name referring to God in his fullness, the essence of God, God is fully present. That's why only the high priest receives it. He first received it from Moses, this high name, and then he pronounces the name only once a year in Jerusalem, at the temple, in the Holy of the Holies. Why? Because this means facing God. So this is, well, I will just pass on to uh, Abraham Abulafi. I have no time to explain further. Now, a few quotations from Ramana Maharshi, only as a correspondence. I don't want to interpret this. I only want to show some correspondences which are so obvious you cannot, you, you will remain without words. So Ramana Maharshi is a sage. Uh, Jung said about him that he is the whitest spot on the white map of India, yes? Uh, a, sa a thinker who uh, a sage who lived at the end of the 9th century, beginning of 20th, 20th century, he actually passed away, if he ever passed away, according to his uh, vision, in uh, uh, 1950. Now, look at this. Your duty is to be, and not to be this or that. I am that I am sums up the whole truth. I am that I am is exactly the method is summarized in be still. I, I, the relation I, I is the key, is the self. I am this is the ego. When the I is kept up as the I only, it is the self. When it flies off at a tangent and says, I am this or that, I am such and such, it is the ego. The self is God, I am is And now I will only point to Abraham Abu Nafia, the last uh, quotation. In the Jewish mysticism, Abraham Abu Nafia is one of the most important Kabbalists, is a 13th century Kabbalist, prophetic Kabbalah, and he says, and I finish, about the union between God and man. Look at this. For now, he, which means the practitioner, is no longer separated from his master, which might be the Messiah or God, and behold, he is his master, and his master <coughs> is he, for he is so intimately united with him that he cannot by any means be separated from him, for he is him. We continue. After, yes. yes. <laughs> when you address questions, we will yes, continue. Thank you very much. I want to highlight just one thing, as you mentioned, at the same point. People can call me, I refer to God. People can call me. God entered in the human history and invited us in this dialogical relationship, personal relationship. And this is amazing. This is, I think, a theology. Not just of suggestion of uh, who I am, who is God, what is God, what I am, in uh, just philosophical discourse. The theology is more than that. It's this kind of experience to call God and to have this personal relationship with, uh, with, with Him. Because in Christianity, God invites us in this 
relationship and this relationship. Yes, it is important to see, for example, yes, since we talk about Christianity and also in, in Christianity the Tetragrammaton, because of the translations from Septuagint, almost disappeared. When you say Lord and God, you don't see that there is a problem. In Hebrew you see the problem, you have four letters and then you stop. You understand that this refers to the presence of God. Yes. You stop and you call it Adonai because you know that the name itself, if it is pronounced, God will be fully present. If you have the name Ehiya Sherehie, Ego Sum we know that God is present, not fully present by his essence. Fully present by his essence in Judaism. He was, if this happened only once for Moses. This is very clear in the Jewish tradition, yes. In Christianity, uh, Jesus is the one, yes, who uh, who makes this presence, this full presence, active for us. Yes, this is. A, but who can resist this? This is the problem. Yes, who can resist the presence of God? Who can resist the divine name, the Tetragrammaton? So Moses could resist and. As he did, this. this is the highest way of being in front of God. This is why it is called in Hebrew panim al panim, face to face. Prosopon po prosopon. Yes. What does it mean in Hebrew? This is uh, the fully presence. Panim al panim means panim means the way, all the way is a is a plural noun. So every person has many ways of being and turning toward reality. This is panim. Panim means all the ways, all the modalities you have in order to interact. Yes. Panim, el panim means that Moses, everything that he is, and God, everything that he is, which means tetragrammaton, were facing each other. Yeah, Robert, please. <laughs> the concept of being, I still feel that there's some sort of um, nod or resonance, strong resonance with uh, Kind of phenomenology here, from kind of Heideggerian question. Not here. only, but yes, of course. Right. Who is dealing with Heidegger? We find Heidegger. Who is dealing sure. with Merlot? Or you will find Merlot. Well, well, Monty <laughs> is actually who I would like to contact with. I mean, not contact with. <laughs> uh, some people actually uh, now feel it's very important to actually question the way uh, he addresses being. Right. So, uh, being is something that uh, being with a big B. Uh, is uh, like if it is divine, like God, or essence, is something to be addressed, or or there's also ad the adoration. You, you 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 receive the call, but you also you don't necessarily identify or connect with that kind of being, but you are maybe. I'm quite interested in how resistance means what that means in that sense, uh, in terms of is it to to in Merleau-Ponty, is it to make a charismatic uh, con contact with me? Or is it, some people say, it's a contact in separation, that you still have a critical distance. There isn't complete certainty what being actually is. Yes, I will have a twofold answer and quick answer. So the first point, this, uh, this text refers to being, in, in the case of Moses and God, absolutely being and that's it, which means Moses was not anymore, I am the prophet, I am the human being, I, my, my, I don't know, my arm is aching, no, he was only to be at that time, at that moment, what does it mean? It is the same distinction we have till the, till the Middle Ages in, uh, in, in theology, the distinction between essence and existence, what does it mean? It means that Every individual, entity, object, doesn't matter, yes, is something, is something, yes. This is a bottle, is a bottle. God, according to the Jewish tradition, is the only one who can say that I am to be. I am what I am. Am. I cannot say I am what I am because it means that I am producing myself, creating, I have to, the word to be belongs to me, so I, my essence is to be. If my essence is to be, 
I have no beginning and end. So to say I am the one I am belongs only to God, and it is pure being. Ramana Maharshi says this is being consciousness, purely being, and that's it. What do you have to do in high, in high states of consciousness? And Ramana Maharshi says, just be still. What does it mean, be still? Just be. Just be, which means I am, I, I, we are together. Yes, we are, that's it, we are. Now the second uh, aspect, separation. In Hebrew there is a very important term, kadosh, which is saint. We know, kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzvah, Tzvah. Yes, saint, saint, saint is lord of, uh, of the hosts. Kadosh being sacred, saint, means in Hebrew, not to be separated, not that God is sep he, God is not an object, to put it in a geographical area, like transcendence in a geographical way. It is from here to here, and then we, we come from here to here. No. Kadosh means being separated like that. Who is saying? Saint, saint, saint is the Lord of the, of, of the hosts, the angels, because they have the divine look. So they say, what, what they see, the divine, the angels are saying, not, yes, the angels, what they see. They see everything, this appears in Isaiah, yes? They see everything, the whole world and the, the plenty of worlds, up, yes, up, down. They see everything, and at the same time, they know that God is not to be found there as a particular entity or object. This is kadosh, which means God is everything and at the same time, nothing. To see this separation, this is the separation. It's not be geographical from here to here. Yeah. So God is everything, it's nothing. but at the same time, they know this is the splendor of God, the glory of God, but God is not that. This is Kadosh, and that's it. Okay, so um, the time, no time, thanks for a great reading. Okay, so the, the being is become problematic in different tradition because being entails fixed entity. So I'm asking you, being can you become? So in, in lots of scholarship, instead of seeing being, seeing, rather seeing become. We become human. We're not born as a human, but we become human. So can you use becoming to replace your being? So that's the one question. No, Secondly, you can't. how about the presence? No, you can't. I read out my question actually really want to you I want to see about philosophical dimension of presence. What's that mean? Presence. Temporal, spatial, what else? Yes, you know, when you say uh, for a human being, yes, you have time and space and you can talk about becoming. There is becoming from the viewpoint of the human person. There is becoming, because becoming, which means trying to reach the divine presence. Yes. But you cannot replace to be with to become. Why? Because God is not becoming. So to be belongs to the divine realm, which means absolute presence always. It is not in, a, in time and space. We are in time and space and we try to approach this presence, which means try, becoming in order to be. Yes, something like that. We, we, we try as spiritual beings to... beings. We do our best to become in order to be. Because we are not in us. Something is lacking. Yes, we are not. We are not our fullness. Our fullness of being is I, I, which means union. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I not have so and the, yes, short and short. Because I found very interesting, seriously, this. It is very interesting to me. It is very interesting. Professor, I know, but short because. Yeah, coffee. Yeah. Okay. With us. Uh, Maria, thank you very much for your exposition. Thank you. I listened to it very well. 
uh, taken in by uh, the attitude also of yours, which is uh, it shows that you consider the question also from a personal yes, uh, right. uh, point of view, and that is central. This is an existential yes. problem for you, which is not very often the case for the philosopher or the historian of religion. So, so it was it was for me um, most. Uh, well, heartwarming to observe it. Uh, and, but what I want to say is that uh, actually what we are talking about here is knowledge, reality, and transcendence. These three uh, items, so to say, of our discussion also indicate the three different spheres of philosophy in a way uh, because on the one hand we have knowledge that means epistemic problems and then we have the reality which is the ontology problem. And then we have transcendence, which is something which is radically different. Uh, as uh, uh, yeah, uh, Robin said, but uh, I think that in the whole discussion that we are having now, the basic thing is that we are mixing, so to say, the levels of discussion. We are shifting from epistemic questions to ontological questions or anti questions, and uh, that we are taking in the transcendentality uh, uh, together with that, with our <coughs> general, uh, well, let us say, problem with grasping uh, the thing which we want to grasp, which we do not deny that there is something behind to be grasped. But what I wanted just to somehow summarize the discussion in such a way that, you know, the, there is a great saying of, uh, <coughs> of uh, among the Levinas, uh, who are not saying, question, I opened it, I have it before me, and he said, uh, he asked, if ontotheology's mistake consists in taking being for God, or yeah. rather taking God for being? <laughs> and that question, I think, is the core and the focus of our discussion, because we have the tendency to come from the tradition, Occidental tradition, of searching for being and essentializing it to the point at which we can say that this is this is God, but we can also talk about it in different terms. And uh, in Indian tradition, there is also such possibility. But this I don't want to talk about. In now, orthodox, in orthodox tradition, there is another possibility you know, beyond this ontological and yeah. ontological. Yeah. Yeah. So. Last question. Yes, only uh, yeah. if so I please. may. Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, what I did here, I established a correspondence between two different traditions through different verses, which belong yes to the Hebrew Bible and um, the sayings, the teachings of Ramana Maharshi. Why? Because it's surprising how they meet. So this is why I brought them together. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to show that this is God. No, no. this is what these texts are saying. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a problem related to the divine names here. Yeah. Whether the name, mm -hmm. the name is important, God, or to be. So this is the problem. In the Jewish tradition, they come together. So there is no distinction between the name and being when you talk about the highest divine name. When you talk about lower divine names, <coughs> there is a distinction. Now, in Ramana Maharshi, this is very interesting, that he refers to names and to the fact of being, but he's not imposing anything, because actually he, he cannot, he cannot uh, describe this being. He says in the end, you should be still, which means be, and be silent especially. Be silent. Hmm. Well, in the case of the Hebrew tradition, I think we have more like uh, the language mysticism. And in the case of uh, uh, Maharishi, we more have the, que the question of how existentially approach the essence of the human being. So this is a slightly different perspective as well, to my understanding, if we talk about uh, 
Yes, but these are label, labels. I mean, we have some no, labels. No, they are not labels. I would say they are yes, categories they are. in defining the structure of the experience. So we cannot define anything. We have to go to the text and reread the texts all the time. I mean, we have to go back to the text and to just face the texts and to see how their ground. And what gives us this audacity to do that? Mm -hmm. What gives us? This audacity to do that, this courage. The, we are scholars. This is what we are doing. We are investigating texts and traditions. We have to do this. Otherwise, we can only talk in the air, I mean, it's nothing. Uh, yeah, the short, last short remarks from Suleiman, please, because I think we must take a coffee break. Suleiman, the Magnificent, <laughs> your <laughs> highness, please. <laughs> uh, I have only one question. Yes. And three points. Uh, uh, question there. I want to understand the biblical things, okay? We must understand the etymology of the term That's yes. right. So, in terms of philosophy, is there any difference between Il, Elohim, Enwa, Adonai, in terms of philosophy? Or they give them the same significance? The second point is... Uh, 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 Suleiman, Elohim. Elohim, Il, El Adonai, Yehovah. Elohim, El, Adonai, yeah. Yehovah, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One year course would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or they give the same significance. Yes. The second point is, will that answer to Moses? Did he consider himself being or existence in his answer to Moses? Once again, it did he consider no. himself? Who, who, if God, he when God answered to Moses, did he consider himself being or essence, essence. or existence? Essence of something. Because you know, in uh, the Septuagint, in the Greek Septuagint, we find it ego ini to on, ego ini to on. But in Latin Septuagint, we find it ego son qui son. Okay, so the translation in the Septuagint is not adequate. This is the first yes. thing to say because they transform the predicate in yes. order to say I am that I am. They say I am the being, which yes. is totally different. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it, they the, the 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 first person disappears from the second part totally, which is a huge mistake. Yes, it's like paraphrase. Yes, it's mm -hmm. like the third point is the third and the last one. The answer of that to Moses. Was it sufficient answer or, the, or it was an incomplete answer because, or it was just, uh, it was from God to give a chance to Moses to practice some spiritual practice to, to know God. I will give him a complete Very answer. short. I will start with the last question. Okay. The, very short, please. Uh, the second, uh, I, I think I, I've already answered with the Septuagint, yes? yes. The, the last one. Uh, <laughs> Moses is, this is the first call of Moses, yes? yes? It's the, the first call. He needs a, a name, what name? A name which makes God present. Not fully present, but present for the people. Because he met God, but he, met, he needed the people to meet God in the same way he met God. So he, has, he receives this name. So when he calls this name, God appears, not as the tetragrammaton, but in the same way he first appears to Moses when he was called. The, the highest degree, because it was not complete, <coughs> yes. is the perfection of Moses. Towards the end of his life, after taking the people out of Egypt, there is in chapter 33 a very important verse where it is said like that. Um, so Moses asks to see God, <coughs> to see the Lord better. So the Lord said, I will make my goodness pass in front of you. Yes? And I will call my name. This is the translation. But actually in Hebrew is, yes, I will make my to be, all that is good, all my goodness pass in front of you, and <coughs> I will pronounce, utter my <coughs> name. Which means I will just say it to you. And God says the name, and the name is the Tetragrammaton. So he receives this divine name in a verse which, if, we, which I, if it is read through Septuagint, we don't even understand that he is receiving a name. Because of the translation, yes? But this is the highest, when he receives the Tetragrammaton, this is the highest communication. But this was the second and the third one, but the first one to did it answer. The first? Well, I mean, Elohim, Elohim. 
Elohim El Adon. Elohim is the name we, we, we so we, when we acknowledge that God exists, we call him Elohim. And this is a name by tradition, and it usually refers to visible aspects of God. When Moses sees the bush in fire, Elohim is talking to him from the bush. Only Elohim can talk from the bush. Adonai will never talk from the bush. Yes? Or through the bush. Okay, thank you very much.